Porter's Five Forces, a summary of Michael Porter's articles, How Competitive Forces Shape Strategy, 1979, and the Rewrite in 2008. Learning these forces help us to understand and cope with competition. The five forces are potential entrants, suppliers, customers, substitutes, and competition. Looking at these shows the roots of an industry and if there's money to be made by finding ways to be different. This differentiation will allow survival in competition. So again, let's recap the forces before we go into each one. Threat of new entrants. Bargaining power of suppliers. Bargaining power of buyers. Substitute products and services, which all put pressure on the competition. It's not always clear before you look at these individually which one is a dominant force. So let's talk about the threat of entry. When a company enters a market, they will bring some things. New capacity and the desire to take customers. And these things may put pressure on the rates of investment, prices, and costs within the industry. A company coming from another industry may bring things that give it more power. And just the threat of a new company coming might change an industry. So, there are seven things which make the walls to jump and enter a market higher or lower. Supply side economies of scale. This means that if you aren't a big player, you better have some serious cash to overcome the low prices everyone else gets their supplies for. Two, demand side benefits of scale. This means you aren't a part of the older networks because you're a newbie and people may not want to buy from you. Three, switching costs. This means the industry may have costs to switch to your product, like electricity and phone companies. Four, capital requirements. This is a fancy way of saying if you don't have a lot of cash, you may not be able to make it. This would apply for businesses like a hospital where it takes tons of many things before you even open. You can offset this though if you have a way to make money quickly once you open. Five, incumbency. That means those that have been there a while have an advantage over you because people know them. Six, unequal access to distribution. This means that others already have their process of getting resources set up and you may not have an easy access to them. But there's a chance you might be able to make your own way to get them. Seven, regulations and government policy. The older companies in the industry may not be required to do things you are because they are, quote, grandfathered in, quote. This also refers to licenses you have to have, which may be a lot if you're a hospital or a healthcare system. In addition to those fun walls to jump, you might run into some more hurdles once you are on the other side of the wall. You will want to find out if the other companies in your industry trip others before you, if those other companies have many trip items to use. Look into whether they can cut their prices and make it impossible for your company to make money. And if the other side of the wall is slow like molasses and letting you make money. Now, let's say you make it over the wall and the other companies don't cut you off the knees. What's next? Supplier power. You need to understand where the concentration of the supplies you need are. You need to know if those who make the supplies you need even care about your industry or if they can actually even become your competition. You need to find out if there are cost-changing suppliers. And you need to know if they can make a special product for you. On the other side of the equation, you need to look at buyer or customer power. What if there are only a couple of companies that will buy from you and are they huge? If they boycott, what will that do to your company? How standardized is the product or service you're offering within the industry? Can you offer a difference in your product or service that customers will like? Does the industry even need what you offer? Can your products or services stand on something other than quality? Can customers just switch from using you to someone else without notice? Will you earn small or large profits? Can your customers purchase in bulk and how will it affect your company? If you aren't sunk yet, there are two more areas to look at. One is substitute products or services. You have to watch for competitors that can price match you and for customers being able to leave you for any reason without caring. The last force is the one in the middle. All the other forces play into it. Competitive rivalry. You will need to answer these questions. Are the competitors equal? How many of them are there? How fast or slow does the industry grow? What would it take to get out if you needed to? How invested are these competitors? How similar are these folks' products and or services to yours? What are the fixed costs of being in the industry? How long will the product or service last if it can't sell fast enough? After all these questions and thoughts, what matters is the whole picture painted by the answers, not just one answer. Other factors to consider. What technology and innovation do you have or need? How does the government play into your industry? Is your product or service standalone or do other things automatically go with it? On industry structure, do the threats of entry and substitutes shift over time or with conditions? 
What changes the supplier and buyer powers? What things would change the competition baseline for everyone involved? So, okay, I've gone through all of that. Now what? You can build your company strategy after you understand all the sources. Position your company. Exploit and shape industry change. Help define the industry. Uncover opportunities. Detect threats. Be better prepared. The goal is to defend or influence everything. Figure out whether going into the industry is worth it. Know and weigh the pros and cons. And build strengths and know if you can make money. Quarters five forces in a nutshell.